So next, I'd love to move on to our last, but not least, uh, in-person entrepreneur uh, session this afternoon. A gentleman that, in my own personal opinion, has some of the most brilliant marketing and one of the greatest tasting products you will find in the LCBO. Joining us today is Omid McDonald, and Omid is an eclectic serial entrepreneur whose past startups range from medical devices to software for DJs. And yeah, exactly. An engineer, an engineer and prolific coder, Omid has several patents and academic articles to his credit. He became an amateur with distilling while visiting a craft distillery in Charleston. I think that there's some stories to that piece. But it wasn't long until Omid started making moonshine in his basement with a copper pot he still, um, a copper pot still he had hand built. He saw an opportunity to pursue his dream of starting a distillery when he learned of a problem that existed in the marketplace of an excess of milk sugar plaguing the dairy industry. So sharing more about Dairy Distillery's story, please welcome Omid. Well, it's so great to be here in person. Uh, this, uh, the reason I'm here today is actually an, another in-person event. Uh, shortly, we uh, uh, opened in summer of 2019. Uh, Deborah Whale came to visit our distillery with 30 uh, dairy farmers. It was a gorgeous day. I don't know if you remember that day. I remember it clearly. I was actually, I, I looked very happy, but I was very worried about rain because we had absolutely no plan B to host 30 dairy farmers if, if it rained. But the barbecue turned out uh, perfectly, and I uh, got to know uh, Deborah and her passion for the agriculture uh, industry. And uh, she later was very kind to introduce me to John Lansink, who last year through Ag Capital uh, invested in dairy distillery. So, in person events will be to Zoom anytime for making those true connections. <laughs> Uh, I'm not from the ag space or, or, or a farmer. Uh, I'm a, a computer engineer uh, and, a, and a software uh, person. And so I've done uh, startups in the medical space, the imaging software for pediatric cardiologists. I went to France to do a startup uh, in the telecom space where a little bit of code I wrote was installed on over 15 million SIM cards, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then I went to uh, Brooklyn, New York to do a startup uh, to allow DJs and mashup artists to monetize uh, their works. Each one of those projects required investment. And uh, I've been fortunate, very fortunate, to be able to write the investors who, who, took, uh, who put faith into me, write them some nice checks. But I've also had the very difficult experience uh, of telling someone who put their faith in you and put their money into you, into me, uh, that uh, I couldn't make it work and they, they'll lose their money. Uh, so I take investment and taking money very personally. It's a very difficult thing. I, I know there are people in the room who have taken, uh, taken other people's money, and, and, uh, but it, there's risk to it. And uh, for me, that worry propels me forward to make sure that I'm successful. So as I mentioned, I'm not from uh, uh, the uh, farming space, but I became fascinated with craft distilling, uh, visiting a uh, distillery in Charleston. I remember to this day, the copper, the beauty of it all. Uh, but I never uh, thought I, uh, I could get into the business. I took courses. I, I made some horrible alcohol in my basement. But never thought I could turn this into a, into a profession until one day my uh, cousin had returned from his uncle's dairy farm and was telling him how milk sugar was being dumped. And that was sort of like the uh, light bulb, classic light bulb moment. I was like, oh, well, can we turn that into alcohol? So I'm going to jump into the, the, the topic of, the, of this um, uh, of this uh, talk, which is why investment matters through our experience at Dairy Distillery. So the first thing I did uh, when I had this crazy idea of milk, milk vodka, 
was, okay, I got to validate this before anyone other than myself puts money into this. Uh, as, as I said, you got to really feel 100% convinced before you accept money from anyone else. And when I say 100%, if someone is not putting their own money into it, you got to ask them questions. So I put a quarter million dollars of my personal money and a year and a half of my uh, free labor to validate some milestones. I said, okay, I got to hit these milestones. Uh, things like I got to find, find some sugar. We got to actually be able to make this alcohol. So I hired the University of Ottawa to do a prototype. I uh, had to find a place to put the distillery and secure the land. Uh, I wanted to get a grant from the Canadian Dairy Commission, so went through that whole process and got a $75,000 grant from them. So I figured if I could get through the, uh, a granting process with the federal government, I'm doing something right. So once I've hit all those milestones, I was like, okay, there's something here solid enough to go to the next step. And that's where friends and family come in. So. Uh, I'm fortunate, I do have a nice circle of friends and family who have seen uh, successes and also uh, uh, failures of, of mine, but have a strong belief in, in what uh, I, I come to them because I come with a solid business plan that they get to review. Uh, so we raised a uh, half million dollars to start building the distillery, get all the equipment to run what they'd done in the lab at the University of Ottawa to do it in scale. Uh, so it was uh, the end of 2018, the first uh, bottle of our vodka. Who here has had uh, our vodka? Oh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> well, that's great news. Uh, so the, uh, the vodka started coming out of still at the end of 2018. Uh, it was a great success. We got press everywhere, like uh, the local papers, national papers picked up. And people drove out to Almont. We were 45 minutes outside out of Ottawa. I didn't think anyone would come to the distillery. People came out in droves to buy. That gave us some more uh, confidence to raise another half million dollars from friends and family to continue the scale out. So there you can see the construction of the distillery. Uh, anyone that's been, well, I know Deborah's been out to, to visit us. Anyone else? Uh, so if you've come by the distillery, it's quite a beautiful building. We really want to build something that will attract tourists. And uh, being a startup person, you end up being the general contractor for your own distillery construction, which uh, for some reason I've built through the winter three times. I don't advise building right through an Ottawa winter, but that always seems to be the, the, the story. So at the, uh, at the end of 2019, I realized that the core technology that we developed with the University of Ottawa had many more applications than just potable spirits. So we saw a, a pillar of foundation that the spirits business based on this unique alcohol that has a different taste and has a really neat environmental story that was attracting consumers, uh, that could be a pillar of a business, but we saw some new ones. One, which I had absolutely no idea was out there, was hand sanitizer. Who knew that hand sanitizer and vodka are essentially the same product? <laughs> there is like maybe a 1% difference. Uh, so when uh, COVID hit in March uh, 2020, uh, I got some phone calls from the Ottawa Hospital, National Defense saying, hey, can you make sanit sanitizer? And so we pivoted all our production uh, into hand sanitizer and uh, over a year we uh, shipped a quarter million liters of hand sanitizer to the Ottawa hospital. We supplied all the COVID testing centers and also all the um, charities in Ottawa were, were using our hand sanitizer. So that was a, one totally whole new application of uh, alcohol that we didn't know about. And then one that we knew going into it is that this waste product, this, this lactose, this sh uh, milk sugar, is available in huge quantities in Canada, United States, and Europe, and most of it is given, given away for animal feed or dumped, in the case as it was uh, in the Ottawa area. And what we discovered is our process to make this alcohol produces an ethanol that has half the carbon intensity of corn ethanol. And so I'll talk about this in a bit, but uh, now with the focus on carbon reduction, we had a very interesting play in green uh, biofuels as well. So we had these new ambitions. 
We were no longer a craft distillery, which we're on our way to have a nice craft distillery. I'd have a very relaxed life of being a, a small distiller, but we had bigger ambitions. And bigger ambitions required bigger, uh, bigger money and more financing. And so we were, uh, uh, to pursue those ambitions, uh, we closed a $4.6 million round led by uh, John and John DePutter's uh, group at Ag Capital, along with full participation from our existing shareholders uh, to go after that new ambition. Also, that equity investment allowed us to secure a half million dollar grant from the Ontario government to scale our, uh, our production. So what did all this money achieve and allow us to, to position? Well, one, you need money to build a really nice building and, and have a facility. So we have a state-of-the-art distillery that uh, could produce a quarter million liters of uh, pure alcohol, uh, and it's not cheap to build a distillery. When you start out, you're like, you cost out the stills, and like, oh, okay, this nice copper stuff will cost X. Behind in those stills is a whole bunch of stainless steel tubing that is quite expensive. Uh, but this not only has provided us a base for our products, it also provides us a marketing base for the tourists that come to, to visit us. And not, this would have not been possible without uh, the investment we attracted. The unique intellectual pro property that we've developed requires investment to fund the University of Ottawa to continue to develop it and required money to patent it. So patent work is not cheap. So all our uh, the technology converting the lactose in this dairy byproduct to ethanol has been patented, all made possible by uh, the funding that, uh, that we received. Uh, I was just over lunch uh, talking about, uh, we were just talking about the difficulties in recruiting talent. And so obviously money is a part of it, uh, we haven't had any problem re recruiting talent. We we're on a very exciting mission. People like booze and tend to think that working at a spirits company would be cool, so we've been able to attract some great people at reasonable prices. Uh, but having been able to offer things like benefits packages and, and competitive salaries enabled by investment allows us to build a world-class team ready to scale. And this team, uh, this is the first time in my career where a team essentially was dropped into fire. And that's what happened to us during COVID. In three months, we tripled the size of the team to produce hand sanitizer. And that team had to gel and fight through it, fight through the fear of whether we're all going to get sick when we're all jammed together together, and to do a, a totally new product very, very quickly. And that uh, has galvanized us, which is a really, uh, a really uh, solid thing for the team to go forward with. So some of you, anyone grab the creamers from the back? Excellent, put, uh, put in your coffee, you can drink it straight if you want. It's better cold, but uh, uh, they're, they're at room temperature back there. So we started with our vodka, which is uh, Canada's only uh, carbon neutral vodka. So we, every bottle of vodka, vodka is carbon neutral. And then from there, we built, uh, delivered a, a series of cream liqueurs, all using Canadian cream. We're the only spirits bottle with the blue cow on it. So there you go. Which, interesting, uh, I'll mention this in the next slide, we're now available in California, and the Californians are very interested that it's made from Canadian milk because they think it's healthier. Uh, so uh, we've been able to attract a lot of uh, attention for our story, as I mentioned. In 2020, we uh, were ranked, I think, number four fastest growing company in the Ottawa Valley, ahead of a bunch of software people, which was really cool. Um, and so I'd say we have very strong brand awareness in the Ottawa area, and now with the funding, we're going to expand that across Ontario and across Canada. Excellent, right off the bat, some, some reaction to it. So uh, we've done very well in leveraging our story of environmental uh, uh, stewardship of uh, our dairy connection and our local crafts roots. But to build an alcohol brand that can scale across North America, you need to have a marketing uh, strategy and plan that will resonate. And so with uh, enabled by having the proper financing, I said, let's go 
go to the best. And the best, obviously, means go to New York. And so we went to, we uh, hired a firm uh, based in Brooklyn who has taken uh, vodka brands into the top 10. And so uh, the, 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 um, uh, they are working with us to build a, a brand and a language that will attract people. This is just a preview of it. Uh, uh, John had one of the more interesting phone calls with the founder of this uh, uh, marketing firm. And so yes, that is udders on a disco ball. So the concept is the merger of farm culture with glam. And so you'll be seeing a lot of interesting embodiments of this direction coming from us. Uh, we've been doubling our sales growth uh, every year. So the products have been uh, well received. It's not easy to get into the LCBO or to into any liquor board. Each one is separate. Uh, but our unique story on the sustainability side and taste has uh, fostered some uh, pretty fast growth. And I, at this point, we're a national brand. So uh, vodka products are available uh, coast to coast and including the American coast. So in January of this year, uh, we shipped our first pallets uh, to the California market, where, as I mentioned, interestingly, the blue cow is playing quite well there. COVID, I mentioned how we were, uh, delivered uh, sanitizer for our local community. This is a photo that hangs in our distillery, which I, I'm quite proud of. It's a picture of Justin announcing the arrival of the Pfizer vaccine. So you can see that tiny little vial right next to a bottle of dairy distillery hand sanitizer. <laughs> which, yeah, it was quite something. At its peak, we're shipping 15,000 bottles a week. We've made a huge step forward with our uh, green ethanol story. So we've signed an MOU with the 11th largest US uh, dairy cooperative. I can't mention the name right now since we have done the public announcement, uh, but that'll be coming shortly. Sadly, not Canadian. I'm hoping this will spur some Canadians to move forward on this project. So this plant will produce 5 million liters of ethanol uh, using their, uh, consuming all of their dairy waste. Uh, and will displace 10,000 tons of carbon a year, uh, which not only uh, uh, provides uh, a, car a, a tangible uh, story for uh, dairy uh, to say that this is how they're addressing their carbon footprint, but it also uh, has a year and a half payback, an extremely financially attractive uh, project. So we'll be announcing that publicly in a, in a couple months. There was some talk earlier uh, in some of the previous talks about not having sort of a, a realistic and non-realistic realistic projections of where you want to be. In the end, as has as been discussed many times, this is a long journey. This could be a five, seven year journey. So you gotta be going after something big. And, and what you're going after has to fit with the expectations and the amount of money that you raise. And for th the thing that I've really excited about is Oop, up there. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I've, as, this is my fourth startup. Sometimes you plant the seed and the seed dies, or you plant the seed and the, the tree only grows one branch off, off its trunk. This seed we've planted keeps growing branches. And so we have three branches which uh, uh, we see can grow into significant uh, revenue. And so we are projecting, okay, well, what would it take to create a, a billion dollars of shareholder value? Put it out there. What what kind of business would that be, and can we are can we uh, get there? When we get there, TBD. But uh, you always have to be thinking uh, where you want to be, or you'll never get there. And so, uh, what I'm really excited about with the money that and the investment, we can build each one of these pillars to uh, not only uh, create a a great company, a sustainable company, but also uh, return money for our shareholders. Since I was the last person, I tried to keep it short. So uh, oh, happy to take questions. There are creamers there at the back uh, for, uh, with coffee break. Please do, uh, uh, do help yourself.
I mean, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing with us both the incredible retail and fun side, and yet all of the incredible um, movement that you're making on the ethanol side too. I do want to share with you though, as 40 years as a dairy farmer's daughter, I think I was making dairy glam long before that utter ball disco, so and just saying. But on that note, um, we do have some of the dairy dil distillery product to share both here at the break and uh, during our networking session from, uh, from four till five as well. So at this time, we are gonna take a 15 minute power break uh, before we return for the last, our last panel of the day. So uh, look forward to seeing you back in 15. <laughs>